Is a Gentile allowed to study Torah? There are a number of sources that we should mention at the, at the outset of this discussion. There is the famous statement in the Talmud Bavli, in Masechet Sanhedrin, Daf Nunteth Amud Aleph 59a. Rabbi Yohanan states, Goy she'osek batorah hayav mitha. Literally, a Gentile who studies Torah is, uh, should be, or is worthy of being put to death. Those are the, that's the literal meaning of those words. Rambam explains uh, in his Mishneh Torah that the, a Gentile who studies Torah is not, uh, in fact, executed for doing so. It is not uh, in any way equivalent to uh, a Gentile who steals or murders or anything of the sort, but he is uh, reprimanded and told that he may not do so. That is one statement which we have to take into account in the context of this discussion. Furthermore, we have another statement in the Tamud Bavli, in Masachet Gitin Samuch Amud Beth, 60b, where we find uh, another statement, and it is no coincidence, I believe, by Rabbi Yohanan, the same Rabbi Yohanan who uh, made the statement we just quoted in Masachet Sanhedrin, that a goy she'osek batara is hayav mitha, here we hear Rabbi Yohanan say, Lo karath ha-kodesh baruch hu barith im Yisrael, the irrevocable, irreversible uh, covenant and connection between Hashem and Am Yisrael was uh, established on the basis of, Rabbi Yohanan states, Ela bishvil devarim sheba'al peh, based on the Torah sheba'al peh. In other words, the essential covenant and uh, unique form of, of communion between Am Yisrael and Hashem, uh, which takes place by way of the Torah, through the agency of the Torah, by the fact of our studying Torah and living Torah. It is particularly the aspect of Torah, which is known as Torah Sheba'al Peh, the oral tradition, that, that that is in fact the basis of that covenant between Am Yisrael and, Hash and Hashem. This statement clearly uh, wishes to make a clear distinction between the Tasha Bichtav and the Tasha Baal Peh. And it connects uh, the makes a connection between that fact, the, the existence of Torah Baal Peh, the oral tradition, within Am Yisrael for thousands of years. It makes a connection between that and the special connection between us and Hashem. In a similar vein, we find in the Tamud Bavli, in Masechet Harira, Daf Yod Gimel Amud Aref, also in the Tamud Bavli, we find two statements by Rabbi Ameh. One refers to the study of Sitre Torah, the study of the uh, more hidden and uh, more uh, profound parts of the Torah. Rashi explains here uh, that this refers to Ma'aseh Merkava, Ma'aseh Vereshith, and Sefer Yassira, and one could claim that it refers to other things as well, but that's a, a different discussion. Uh, Rabbi Ameh says, En Musarim Sitre Torah, one is not allowed to convey, to teach Sitre uh, Torah, such aspects of the Torah, In other words, a person has to be a particular kind of person. And the, the, uh, the statement goes on to specify certain characteristics. For example, the person has to be navon, he has to be particularly wise and insightful. And he has to be, uh, uh, he has to be a hacham, harashim, he has to be a person who is adept at understanding uh, deep and arcane things, etc. In other words, not to all people do we uh, can we teach or, or speak of such things. Now the term used by Rabbi Ameh is en musarim. This implies that we are discussing something which is given over by word of mouth, that is called limsor, as opposed to that which is a written text. Uh, something may be written, but if it needs to be explained, the explanation is nimsar, is given over, it is conveyed, it is not written down. Uh, so here we're talking about uh, 
an explanation, a teaching, uh, instruction which is given over from from uh, the mouth of the teacher to the ear of the student. And the same Rabbi Ame immediately goes on to say also, En Musarim Divrei Torah Le Roy. One cannot uh, convey Divrei Torah to a non Jew. The Pasuk he quotes to uh, back up this idea is the Pasuk in Tehilim, Lo Asachen Le Chol Goy, O Mishpotim Bal Yedaum. This is a Pasuk uh, in Tehilim which speaks about the fact that only Am Yisrael receives the Torah. This, these two statements, in fact, uh, in Masech and Hagicha, both imply that we are talking about Torah that is given over orally and not to a written text. On the basis of these uh, statements, we can begin to discern uh, the meaning of what uh, Hazal t- tell us, that which, we, that which we saw in the original statement we quoted in Masechet Sanhedrin, that a non-Jew is not allowed to study Torah. This statement refers, it seems quite clear, to Torah Sheba'al Peh and not to the Torah Shebikhtav. The statement in Masechet Sanhedrin also uses the term Osek. It says, Goy She Osek Batorah. The term La Asok Batorah is used particularly by Hazar with reference to, to studying, reciting, memorizing the Mishnah and discussing the Tasha Ba'al Peh, what we call Mishnah or Baraitoth or Talmud. All these things were originally only Ba'al Peh. They were only oral. They were memorized. They were committed to memory. They were not written down. And it's only because of uh, the fact, as Rashi points out, that uh, the Torah was uh, going to be forgotten that these things were eventually uh, written down. That statement, by the way, uh, of Rashi, that the Talmud and the, all of the Torah Shebaal Peh was committed to writing only because of the very uh, serious and uh, very real possibility that the Torah Shebaal Peh would be forgotten, or at least parts would be forgotten, this statement is made by Rashi in Masech Gitin on Daf Samach, the Gemara that we quoted a moment ago. On the basis of, of these statements, uh, it seems clear uh, that the intention of the Chachamim was that non-Jews may not study Tarsha Baal Peh, which is, after all, the essence of Torah Yisrael. The Torah, without the Tarsha Baal Peh, is essentially uh, a dead letter. It is something which cannot really be um, put into practice. It cannot result in a unique and edifying civilization as the Jewish people have produced over thousands of years. It is not uh, something which can uh, result in any kind of tradition and teaching that can be passed down from one generation to the next. It is simply not the Torah, it is not Judaism as we know it. The Tasha Bichtav, which is the source of all things, of course, of the Torah uh, and the, uh, our connection to Hashem through the Torah begins with the Tasha Bichtav. Nevertheless, without the Tasha Baal Peh, it is uh, an entirely uh, different reality on, on a very, very much uh, less meaningful and significant level. And Rambam too, when he uh, quotes the statement of Rabbi Yohanan in Masechet Sanhedrin, this is in Hilchot Melachim or Milhamot Perek Asiri, he writes again the exact words of the Talmud, Goy she'asak b'Torah hayav mita. Asak, he uses the word esek, la'asok b'Torah. Again, this term is, is always used in, uh, in the context of the the, the study of Torah Shebaal Peh, not, not the study of the Torah Shebikhtar, which includes the Nevim and the Ketuvim. There, the term, is the verb that's used is always Likro, Kara. Uh, for instance, the Mishnah in the second uh, Perek of Barachot speaks about Haya Kore Batorah Azman Hamikra. If a person was reading from the Torah, uh, he happened to be studying Sefer Devarim at that moment when the Zman of Kriyat Shema came around and he happened to read the parasha of Shema at that moment, the question discussed by the Mishnah is whether he is Yosef the Hova, whether he fulfills the Miswa of Kriyashma by, by reading from the Torah, but the verb is always 
Hayakore there is talking about Nikroba Torah because uh, reading from the Pesukim of the Torah and under the understanding the Pesukim without the benefit of the uh, Tarsha Baal Peh is, is always referred to as Kriya right, as opposed to Esek. Esek, La Asok, involves uh, delving into uh, the meaning of the Torah, comparing the wording of this Pesuk to that Pesuk, comparing one Miswa or one principle to another and uh, extrapolating from one thing to another and therefore deriving uh, halachoth and understandings and practices from this, uh, from the Tashib Ikhtaf, that is called La'asuk and that is what the Gemara is referring to in Musahid Sanhedrin and that is what Rambam is referring to and this understanding is exactly what we find written by the Abbas, Rabben, Rabbeinu Yaakov Mi'emdin, in his Sidur, the famous Sidur Beth El, also known as Beth Yaakov. He writes in his Perush on the Sidur uh, with regards to Birkat HaMazon, the words that uh, we say in Birkat HaMazon, referring to the Torah, Berith wa Torah, al Torah fi Chashalim for example, in Samnus Ha'oth, the Abbas writes, that this refers to when it says Torah Tehash Ali Mavtano, it's talking about the Torah Shabbal Peh, where he shenit yahadabi isuli mudal la aril al daati. And it is this Torah Shabbal Peh which a uh, uncircumcised Gentile may not study. But then, and then he goes on to quote uh, various statements in the Gemara and from the Tanakh itself. We are aware of the fact that the Torah or parts of the Torah were written uh, on large stones and placed uh, in, in, in certain places in Eretz Israel for the non-Jews to see. In other words, the Tashi Bichtav was shown and was known by these uh, two other nations, to other people, and it was not hidden from them. And the Ya'beth goes on to point out that uh, this is what the first Halakha, the first Mishnah, in uh, Masechet Avoth refers to when it speaks about Moshe Kibel Torah Misinai or Musara Li Yoshua. It uses the term, it uses the verb Limsor. Again, Torah Shebaal Peh is given over, is Nimsar, is conveyed Baal Peh to the student who is listening. In the same way that today, even when we today study the Talmud which is written, to understand it fully, uh, one has to uh, hear the text explained by by great Chachamim over a long period of time before one really can begin to understand fully the depth and the uh, thought processes and the assumptions and the, the, un, the um, understandings and the things which are written between the lines which are the basis of, of the Tarsha Baal Peh. And therefore the Mishnah speaks about Mesara uh, Yoshua just as Rabbi Ameh uh, in the Gemara referred to Mosarim divrei Torah le, le goy. En Mosarim divrei Torah le goy. For the very same reason that we're talking about Tarshi Baal Peh, and that is something that is given over, that is Nimsar. It is also, of course, an historical fact that uh, going back 2,300 years, the Torah was translated into Greek and afterwards into other languages. And uh, for non Jews, uh, since that time, it has been possible uh, to study the the Torah Shebichtav and the Nevi'im and the Ketuvim and this is uh, can and should be seen as also the will of Hashem that the, the Torah, the existence of the Tanakh and uh, the, the thrust of the Tanakh should be uh, known and understood and learned by non-Jews around the world and Rambam refers to this uh, idea at the end of Mishneh Torah, the end of Ilchoth Melachim Omilhamoth where he refers to the fact that the uh, fact that the, the the dissemination of the Torah, the Torah Shabbichtav, by way of the advent of the Christian religion and later the uh, Muslim religion, even though Islam does not uh, officially recognize the Tanakh as Christianity does, but nevertheless, uh, as we know, uh, all the essential ideas of Islam, such as the uh, unity of of God, of the Creator, and uh, the uh, prohibition against idol worship, and all all, uh, all the essential concepts of Islam are taken from from the Torah. The essential notions and concepts of Torah Israel of the Tanakh, 
um, over time became known to uh, a majority of the world. And we should see this uh, as the will of Hashem, that Hashem willed it to be so. And this is what Rambam implies when he speaks about this historical uh, development uh, paving the way for Yimoth HaMashiach in the, in the future. So, in summary, non-Jews may study the Torah Bichtav and uh, the essential commentaries and, and explanations of the words and the basic concepts involved so they can understand the uh, general thrust of the Torah Shebikhtav, of the Nevi'im and the Ketuvim, but they may not, uh, under any circumstances, study the Torah Shebalpeh, which is a unique uh, form of wisdom and understanding which is to be kept and maintained and uh, protected from outside influences and from uh, even others understanding and knowing much about it, it is to be kept uh, for and within the circle of the Jewish people. The production of these videos and maintaining this channel demands much time and money. If you enjoyed this video, please show your appreciation and support. To make a donation, please go to www machonshilo.org and press the PayPal button which appears on the upper right hand side of the home page. To sponsor a video or purchase Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel, please write us at office at machonshilo.org.